Hey, everybody. Today's show. Hey, we're just getting out. It's late. It's okay. Um, look, look. First, I want to tell you this. Today's show, you are going to like. I know you are. Um, today, he's just a really good guy. And I will tell you that uh, it's about sales. Now, I'm hoping that this episode will help you get better at sales. Um, uh, you know, it, it, look. We all know, you guys, if you sell real estate, and that's what this show's about, right? It's about being an entrepreneur through the lens of a real estate agent. You guys go get your license, and then it's sink or swim. And uh, we know that uh, what, like 85% of people who get their license and get into the market today, 12 months from now, are going to wash out. And a lot of that has to do with a lack of training. There is, you know, you join XYZ brokerage, there's no training, um, and if they say there is, it's like, like kind of training. Um, and it, even it's amazing that the training that I see that, that people get from even their coaches, it's like, you know, you pay a coach and they're like, oh, hey, go put property flyers out. What? Anyhow. All right. Um, okay. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the episode a little bit later. Uh, look, before we get there, I want to tell you a little bit about my week. Um, I've had a gnarly week, man. Um, I was, uh, I, I won't, I'm not going to say any names here, but I was scheduled to speak at this conference, um, and I won't give any timeline. I don't want anybody to put it in two and two together. So I was scheduled to speak. I was, get, I was on two stages uh, over the weekend, um, and uh, there were some people there that want, they, they saw the agenda. I was on it. Um, they got pissed, man. And they said, no, Toby can't, you know, the, the, the attendees – uh, the, the organizers wanted me to speak. The attendees, there was a small group of them, threw a giant baby fit, and uh, I got disinvited. Pretty bummed. I mean, it was, you know, pretty, like, it was, and here's, you know what it boils down to? It boils down to this. Those guys knew I did radio. Those people were doing radio, and they were scared that I was going to come talk and put somebody else in their market, which I, that's what I was hoping to do, but... Ah, man. Okay. So I got that off. My chest feels a little bit better. Uh, and then later in the week, um, I had another a thing like that <laughs> happen to me. Um, anyhow. Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. All right, so some housekeeping. Um, look, we have a very active Twitter family out there. Um, my handle is at Super Agents Live. I'd love to meet you on the, the Twitterville. Um, the show hashtag is Unpack That Idea. What you do not want to do, you do not want to miss future episodes, right? So what you want to do, go to, go to the site. Go to Super Agents Live. Download my book, get on my list, because I share stuff with my list that I don't on the show. Um, that's it. Okay, let's get to this episode real quick. Now, look, here's, here's kind of today's guest deal. Um, he wants to help you reach your financial potential. And what he says, he wants you to shift your mindset from a getting mindset, what can I get out of this, to a giving mindset. Okay. Now I know some of you guys might be thinking, geez, I'm going to give rather than get. That's a recipe for bankruptcy. Not the way that this guy does it. You know, what he'll say is he'll say that money is an echo of value. So when you can give and you give value to others, the, the byproduct of that is money. So he wants you to move from an I viewpoint, me to an others viewpoint. Um, and he does that he, he represents it by, with five laws, the law of value, the law of compensation, the law of influence, the law of authenticity and receptivity, um, how you can give more value or how can you create more value than receive payment? I know that might sound weird, but I don't, I'm not going to try to illustrate it. Um, just the, he'll do it on the show. All right. Hey, let's get to it. 
Bless today's you. guest. I'm excited about today's guest. Today's guest is a national best-selling author and speaker. He's written five books. His brand, is, I think, is best represented by his book, The Go-Giver. And if you don't know about The Go-Giver, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the tenets in it. And The Go-Giver book explains how to reach your financial and personal potential, focusing on the interlocking web of the five laws, value, compensation, influence, authenticity, and receptivity receptivity and consistently and constantly giving and allow you to reach your potential. I'm thrilled to welcome Bob Berg. Hey, Bob, thanks for taking the time out. Toby, my pleasure and honor. Thank you. So, you know, look, you have, I've seen you speak on a lot of different stages, a lot of different shows. Um, If the audience is not familiar with you, maybe take a minute, tell us a little about who Bob Berg is, some of your background. Well, really, I'm a, I'm a sales professional. I began in broadcasting and uh, started out in a, in a, a sm- started out in radio and then in, in television in a very small market. Uh, it was an ABC affiliate, uh, but it was really one of those very small places where you, you got to do everything and learn everything. Uh, the problem was I wasn't very good at it, <laughs> and so uh, I, I very quickly was not in broadcasting anymore, and I graduated into sales. Now, uh, in in sales, I, intuitively I understood it was about finding a way to serve others, um, and yet I didn't have the skill set to do so. So I floundered for a while, and the training at the company I was first with was negligible at best. So uh, really floundered, and then one day in a, a, a bookstore, and this is 35 years ago when bookstores basically sold books, right? and, and so uh, there were lots of books there, and I was going past the business section, and I saw there was a book book called How to Master the Art of Selling by Tom Hopkins, and which is now a classic, of course. And he got his start in real estate in uh, Simi Valley and, and is a, just a fantastic trainer and teacher. And um, But back then, I hadn't heard anything about anything like an art to selling. I just thought you went in there, you knocked on doors, you, you, you talked a lot and tried to get people to buy, blah, 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 blah. Right? Yeah. And so it, it taught me a whole new, new thing. So I, I got his book and uh, – I practiced, drilled, and rehearsed every night. Within three weeks, my sales went through the roof. Now, the, the interesting thing is that there was really no difference in me from from three weeks earlier when I first bought his book to three weeks later other than I had a system. I had a methodology. And I know you talk a lot about that as well, that when you, you, when you want to be successful, uh, don't take a, a shot in the dark or a stab in the dark. I mean, find a system. Find a way to do something that's been proven. And I personally define a system as the process of predictably achieving a goal based on a logical and specific set of how-to principles, hmm. the key being predictability. If it's been proven that by doing A, you'll get the desired results of B, then you know that all you need to do is a and do A consistently enough, and you'll get the desired results of B. The amazing uh, realtors, the top producers that you have on your show, I mean, this is what they've done. They're not making it up on the, on the fly. They've learned a system that's congruent with their values and their personality, and they have utilized that. And they, uh, of course, many of them teach that to others. And so to me, that really said something to me, that there was a system, there was a process to it, and I became a person who just loved sales at that point because I understood that it wasn't about me. It was about finding a way to genuinely provide value to another human being, to the prospective customer. And when you knew how to do that and you knew you were bringing them exceptional value through your product or service, now you could really enjoy what you were doing. You know it made a difference. And from there, I worked my way up to sales manager of another company and at that point, uh, Having been asked to share what was working for me and my team with other companies, I then began to to develop a career as a speaker. Interesting. Okay. So, and, and look, I think a lot of that stuff, you know, in, in terms of giving value uh, to others, I think, you know, when you when you unpack that um, a minute ago, how I envision that is it, this this is like the advisor, right, versus the guy who's pitching, right? If you, as a salesperson, if you can be the advisor and truly say, what what is it that you need rather than here's what I have, buy it, right? I, mean, I think that's kind of what you did. Um, now, when you came up with a system that, you know, systems that's congruent with your own values, what, what about those people 
Um, you know, maybe they're new in sales, right? So you, uh, you w- couldn't make it in broadcasting, which you have a great voice. I'm not sure why. You moved into sales. You, you have a great voice too. Well, I thank you. I appreciate the same that. Same thing to you when we were first talking before the program. We, we, we used to call it in the business having a great set of pipes. <laughs> you have that, that good voice that really shines through. And, I, but, and here's the point I want to try to make, Bob, is that I think some people will say, well, geez, I don't, I, I'm new at this. I don't, I don't have anything of value to give. You know, how does someone dig deep and, and, and you know, find their own unique value that they can give to others? Well, we all have value to give. I, I believe we have two types of value. And, and when we talk about the law of authenticity in, in the uh, story, in The Go-Giver, uh, we define it as the most valuable gift you have to offer is yourself. And, and the, uh, the the mentor in that part of the story was Deborah Davenport, who was a realtor, who learned something very important very early in her career. And that is that all the skills in the world, the sales skills, technical skills, people skills, as important as they are, and, and please don't misunderstand, they are, they are all very important. They're also all for naught when, if you don't, um, come from your true, if you don't operate from your true authentic core. Yeah. Now, when you do, when you show up, as I like to say, as yourself, day after day, week after week, month after month, people feel good about you. They feel comfortable with you. They begin to know you, like you, trust you. They want to be in relationship with you. But in order to do this, in order to show up authentically, you've got to feel as though you've got something authentic to show up for. Uh, I believe that as human beings, we all have two types of value, if you will. Uh, One is intrinsic value. That's just by the nature of being born, we bring value to the table. But we also have what I call market value. And I would define market value as those strengths, traits, characteristics, talents that you bring to the situation that you bring to your relationship with others that does provide value to them in a way that they benefit, in a way that they understand it to be of value and for which you will be financially compensated. Uh, we, but we all have different types. Some people have just a wonderful understanding of their, their product. Others have a, an amazing sense of empathy and they can just very easily dig deep and really get to know what a person is really feeling. Other people can ask questions and they're fantastic listeners. Others are, are wonderful connectors of people. Mm-hmm. But we all bring to the table our own. But what we need to do is we need to understand what those strengths Strengths are. Mike Littman calls them assets of value, and I, I love that term. Uh, but that's why it's it's so difficult for us sometimes because as human beings, we're so close to ourselves. We're we're too emotionally involved with ourselves, and it's difficult. Uh, yeah, I can't tell you how often I have been mentoring someone or coaching someone, and they've told me what they're doing. I've said, oh, that's fantastic. That's great. And they've said, oh, no, no, no. Everyone knows how to do that, or everyone right. does that. Yeah. And they, yeah. they weren't being falsely modest either. They really didn't get that they did something special. Because, again, when we're too close to the situation, we, we all see the world through our own uh, model, our own paradigm, our own belief system, if you, you will. And we tend to think that as we see the world, that's how everyone else does too. Yeah. After all, how can it be any any different? Right. And, and that's why it's so important to have someone like yourself, uh, you know, someone who can can understand what that person's going through, who can who can care and yet not be so emotionally involved that you can't really get to the to the to the core. Yeah. And, and look, you know, going back to being, you know, I think that, you know, uh, the notion of being authentic, the notion of being genuine is, and you know, phenomenally important. And I think a lot of people have just have to get over themselves. And, and here's how, here's how I think about it, Bob, you know, if you think of all, you know, the character, the superheroes in, in the media, right? You have Batman, you have Superman, you know, if you think about Superman, Superman, you know, has extraordinary powers, but, but he's also has character flaws, right? He has, he has character flaws and people can resonate with those character flaws, right? They look at Superman, they're like, Hey, you know what? I'm kind of like that guy. I don't have the superpowers, but I kind of like that guy. You know, and then there's then there's different identities that a Superman had, right? He's the he's the curious reporter on one side. He's the you know superhero on the other side. He's the guy who you know has feelings and can fall in love. It just so I I think you know I, one of the most difficult things there is is for each. I think I think you know this is again me seeing the world through my eyes, Bob. You know, is is being authentic, getting over ourselves, and just going. You know what? That's okay. I'm going to show the world 
my warts and all. And I, and I think that when you do that, and I'd love for you to speak to that, you know, I think when you're able to do that, um, you know, people s- believe and see that you're authentic. And, and you know what? Y- y- maybe you, you don't know all the answers, which we, well, none of us do, but you know, people go, hey, you know, I'm going to give that guy a hand, right? This kind of goes back to, to, to some of the, the basic tenets of the go-giver. But uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, no, I think you hit it right on the head. It's absolutely key. We we do need to, to get over ourselves and not think we have to be perfect and not think that the other person thinks we need to be perfect. Uh, one of the um, one of the laws, the law of influence, says you're, you, in the story, it's law number three, says your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interests first. What does that mean? Does that mean be a doormat, be a, be a martyr, be a self-sacrificial? Not at all, not one single bit. It simply means we shift our focus. It means we move from an I focus or a me focus to an other focus. And, you know, if you look at it in a very... Uh, concrete term, and if you look at it in, really in, in a real-world setting, uh, as, as realtors, no one has to do business with you. They're going to do business with you because they believe they're receiving more in value from doing so than in not doing so. And for that to be the case, they've got to know that your focus is authentically and genuinely on them. Mm-hmm. And bringing them value, whether it's helping them sell their home or whether it's helping them buy their their perfect home. Uh, and so it's only when you are authentically, as you said, over yourself and understanding that it's not a matter of you being perfect. It's a matter of you focusing on bringing value to your 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 uh, prospect, your customer, your client. And that's why we say John David Mann, my awesome uh, co-author in the book. Uh, it's why we say that money is simply an echo of value. It's the thunder to values lightning, which means more than anything that the value must come first and the money you receive is simply a very natural and direct result of the value you've provided. Mm-hmm. And that happens only when you've shifted your focus from getting to giving. And when we say giving in this context, we mean constantly and consistently providing value to others. Money is an echo of value. Um, that's a great line. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like you – know, there's another line that, that that reminds me of is that money never leaves the planet. It just changes hands. So it changes hands. Yeah, that's right. Right? Sure. So, so, that, so it's all about you know, who can – so let's talk about value because in the book, that's the first thing, right? And, and value mm-hmm. is a true worth of how much you can give in value to others. Um, in your real-world experience – um, you know, is, is that one of the more difficult things for people to, to do is like, just say, Hey, you know what? Look, I, I don't care about my commission. Let me just give, 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 give. Speaking of that, right. That's, this is a lot of what, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk says, right? Jab, 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 right hook. He's like, give, 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 and then ask. Um, so again, speaking of, is, is that a, a hurdle that people have, uh, either mentally or whatever to say, you know what, I'm not going to worry about that. I have to make my car payment or my rent payment or my mortgage payment. Let me just give with the belief, with the belief, the true belief that, that, it, that, uh, that will echo back to me in the form of money. Well, you make great points. I, I don't think it has to be that mysterious, mystical, and magical. I don't, okay. I don't see it like that. Okay. You know, I don't see it as though you're just giving and, yeah, I'm just going to give and everything and everything's going to be. No, I, I think we need to do it more uh, w- with uh, um, systems, with natural but laws processes. And systems and processes okay. in mind, yep. uh, uh, of course, absolutely. And so, so uh, for example, uh, let's take that first law because this is very important to understand the, the, the law of value, which says your, your, your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. What does that really mean? Yeah. Because when you first hear it, it kind of sounds not only counterintuitive, it sounds like a recipe for bankruptcy. Right. Give more in value than I take in payment. So, so let's place this in its proper context by first understanding the difference between price and value. Mm. Uh, Price is a dollar amount. It's a dollar figure. It's finite. It, it is what it is. Value, on the other hand, and this is key, value is the relative worth or desirability of a thing to the end user or beholder. In other words, what is it about this thing, this product, service, concept, idea, opportunity that brings so much worth or value to it that someone will willingly exchange their money for it and be ecstatic that they did 
while you make a very healthy profit. Uh, as a quick example, let's go one, one very quick example outside the real estate business and then, then bring it back to real estate. Let's say you hire an accountant to do your taxes. This accountant charges you $1,000 and this uh, $1,000 is his fee or literally his price. But what value does he provide in exchange? Well, through his years of work and study and knowing his business, understanding it, listening to you, understanding your needs, desires, getting to know you and know about your business, totally a focus on you rather than his fee, he's able to save you $5,000 in taxes. He's also able to save you countless hours uh, of work, freeing you up to do what you're more qualified to do or would rather do. He also provides you with the security and peace of mind of knowing it was done correctly. So we see, first of all, right here that while, again, price is finite, value can be both concrete in terms of the all that money saved, but also conceptual in terms of that peace of mind, which probably holds more worth or value to you relatively than even the money that you've saved. Absolutely. So what he did is he gave you well over $5,000 in value, well over, in exchange for a $1,000 price or cash value. He gave you more in value than he took in payment. So you feel great about it. And he made a very, very healthy profit, which by the way, in a, a free market based exchange, which simply means neither party is forced to do business with each other. Both parties actually profit. The, the customer profits and the salesperson profits. And that's how it's supposed to be. Now, if we take that into real estate, let's say as the listing, and let's say we're talking in terms of a listing. Well, you're charging a certain fee. Intrinsically, uh, you're, you're giving much more in value than you take in payment. Why? Because you've got, you're utilizing your experience. The process is going to go a lot easier. You're going to sell the home for a higher price than that person probably would have. You're going to be able to do it with less aggravation and far less time. You're going to handle the negotiation with your skill set. You're going to take care of the staging. You're going to take care of the advertising. You're going to get the inspections. You're going to do all these things that take just, uh, just the intrinsic value of this is worth more to that person than what they're paying. Um, and yet there's even much more because in order to set yourself apart from from the other realtors, you've also got to be able to communicate that additional value such as excellence, consistency, attention, empathy, appreciation. And without going into all five of those, because those are all, you know, a whole thing in itself, we yeah. can, but it just takes a while. When you can communicate those as well as just the basic function of what you do as a realtor, you're giving much more in use value than what you're taking in payment. So that person feels great about you and you made a very healthy profit. And again, both parties win. It's not a matter of of not caring about a commission, but it is a matter of putting that to the side yeah. because you've got to be able to focus on that person and on the value you're bringing to them. That's a key. Absolutely, man. That, those are two great examples, and I, I want to dig into them uh, in, a, in a second. But, you know, when for me, uh, we're getting some feedback here. I'm not sure if that's on my side or your side, Bob. Are you hearing it? Uh, I am not, but okay. let me let me put this a little bit lower. What What about now? Yeah, um, that's good. Okay, so here's 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 what here's the example that I'd like to use is, uh, you know, if you think about children, children do not see price; they only see value. You can walk down the toy aisle and see that Hasbro whatever in a box, and it's seven. I mean, I can't believe how I have three kids. I can't believe how expensive toys are, but you know, it's ninety nine ninety nine, right? And they're like, I I love it. I want that. And you're like, hey man, that's oh, that's a hundred bucks. They don't. That's just value to them. They don't see price. And I, so anyhow, I think I think people internalizing and and being able to to break those things up, price value, and go, go further with your example, Bob, of intrinsic value and market value. You know, the notion of, you know, you utilizing uh, your, 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 um, your CPA, giving her $1,000. Um, and uh, I'll tell you, every time I hand my taxes over to my CPA, uh, I don't really care how much she charges. I sleep better at night. Well, as soon as right. my bookkeeper put up, puts it all, I give it to her, man. I'm like, oh, you know what? That's off my plate. And and you know what? And, and I think in terms of value, right? I get to do what I'm good at, right? My that's I don't need to learn. I don't need to go through that aggravation of learning that. Give it away. So again, I think with people being able to, you know, if people don't understand their value, um, I think being able to look at it through that spectrum of, uh, you know, intrinsic and market is it's phenomenally important. So. 
Um, you know, let's talk a little bit about um, – I, I don't know if you wanted to expand on that a little bit more, Bob. You're welcome to. But, uh, I, I, you know, influence – uh, is is something that that I'm keenly um, keenly interested in. Um, you know, I try to with this show. I try to you know influence the markets. I try to influence people to help them uh, you know build a, a, a better business <clears throat> faster. Um, again, dig into influence a little bit because I mean you're you're a phenomenally influential guy in the, in the markets. Um, h- how do you see influence in this go giver aspect? Well, on a very, very basic level, influence is simply the ability to move a person or persons to a desired action, usually within the context of a specific goal. Uh, influence is often misunderstood as as being uh, a matter of push, you know, pushing your will onto others, and you can there you can certainly do that. You can you can uh, uh, if you have positional authority, you can use that that um, that position enable in in order to make people comply. But that's really not influence. That's not that's not an effective form of influence. The only way you can really influence others is by placing their interests first. Uh, Dale Carnegie, in his wonderful book How to Win Friends and Influence People, uh, gave what I thought was the underlying premise of his book. When he wrote, ultimately, people do things for their reasons, not our reasons. And I think when we understand that very, very important aspect of human nature, we then approach influence from an entirely different viewpoint. We understand that in order to move people to a desired action, what we need to do is ask questions about what it is they want. You know, I define selling. I define selling as simply finding out or determining what somebody wants, needs, or desires and helping them to get it. Okay, that that's it. And that's the ultimate uh, definition of influence when you think of it. It's, it's asking yourself, what is it? How does what I'm asking this person to do align with their goal? Align with their wants, with their needs, uh, with their desires. How does what I want this other human being to do, how does it align with with their values? So when you do that, when you ask yourself these kinds of questions, and then, uh, uh, you know, you'll ask the prospect uh, many of those questions. But when you come from a, a viewpoint of asking yourself those questions, how what you do can benefit that other person, now you're much more likely to earn their commitment rather than compliance. Got it. Uh, that's uh, interesting. It's kind of – and I think, you know, I see um, tangent – adjacently, you know, it's kind of like um, how I was envisioning that is, is leading versus – pushing or hurting right Um, well yeah exactly it's pulling Uh, you know we say influence is about pull not about push you you don't hear people say uh wow that toby he is so influential he has a lot of push with people right they would say that toby has a lot of pull with people because that's really what what influence is it's gentle pull um when you know somebody's out there and they're like okay man i love i love bob's message uh you know i i want to go get the book I, and i think everybody go get the book bob berg b u r g the go giver um but you know when you say you know let me sit back let me look at my prospect i want to try to align myself and what i want with their values yeah, i think in this world you know everybody you know we are bombarded with media saying buy my dishwash soap or you know it everything like cars whatever buy something new you know do people are people naturally built uh, to even if I try to align myself with what what with your values, Bob, you know, do you think that there's just an internal bias to go? Oh, geez, there, there's I'm going to push back on that because that can't be true, right? Like, you know, I I, I I I'm getting sold. I'm getting sold. I'm getting sold. You know, Grant Cardone. I don't. Know if, do you know who Grant is? Sure. Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> right. Sell or be sold. Right. He's like he's like that's the deal. He's like you sit down at a table and you know. And I love Grant. He's been on this show and, and you know, but but he puts uh, – that's sort of an adversarial position. You're going to sell or you're going to get sold. And I think – But we'll, here's – Go ahead. Here, here's the thing though, Toby, about that, okay? that That's the title of Grant's book. But when you read the book, what you see is that, that Grant has a great understanding of the fact that in order to sell, you've got to be able to tap in and get this person what they want. Mm. 
you know, Grant comes across more that, you know, with that, the, the aggressive kind of, but no, he's a wonderful salesperson because he understands that it's only by helping people get what they want. Remember, uh, and this is, this is the key. When nobody has to buy from you, they're not going to buy from you because you have a commission you want to make. They're not going to buy from you because you have a quota to meet and they're not going to buy from you because e- even because you think the product's great and they should have it. They're only going to buy from you because you have been able to communicate to them mainly through asking questions and having them tell you, uh, you know, uh, you're, uh, by doing that, you're able to match the benefit of your product or service with their wants, needs, and desires. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes complete sense. And I think, I think absolutely. And, 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 you know, as I think about that, right, I'm getting in line with you. I'm asking you what you want, you know, all that stuff. And you know what happens? How, how, you know, and, and you wrote a book about this, right? So when I get in line with you, you're going to go, ah, Toby's a great guy. He wants to help me. And he's always helped me. Uh, I'm going to, when somebody comes up to me or gets in my orbit that, that is, uh, that I think Toby can help, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to refer them, right? And so this, this ties into your other book. It's, uh, endless referrals. And I, and I would imagine that endless referrals is, uh, you know, the basis is kind of what we're talking about here. Get in line with, with, uh, the values of your prospect. Give them what they want, uh, as well as what they need. And, um, do you want to talk about endless referrals a second before I ask well, the question? It, yeah, I mean, it all ties into, and endless referrals actually all ties into the go giver, too, right, because right. in circle. law number three, Joe, the protege in the story, learns uh, from Sam that the, what Sam calls the golden rule of, of business, the golden rule of sales. And that is that, and this was the underlying principle in, in endless referrals, and that is all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. Mm. So that's really where you're developing that relationship. And that person does begin to know you. They begin to like you. They begin to trust you. And to the degree that you're able to communicate that likability and trustworthiness, worthiness of being trusted, that's the degree that they don't feel defensive. That's the degree to which they feel comfortable with you. And again, that's why it needs to come from a place of authenticity. Uh, or else, they'll, you know, right. they'll be able to to sense that. Not that there aren't some really good phonus balonus uh, people right. out there, sure. but you know, it doesn't last that long, and <laughs> and and uh, it, it's not a way to do business. And so, uh, so when you can create those kind of relationships, then yes, that that's when you have people who who uh, list with you, who buy from you, and who who refer you to others. Yeah, and so look, I'm going to talk about myself for a second because you know the the last part of of your book is is receptivity, right? Mm-hmm. You need to be able to like accept it when people say, "Hey," and and this 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 is personal for me because I do the show, I get emails all the time, which I know I'm sure you do too. People are like, and people will tell me, Toby, I will buy anything you put out. Guess what? Do you know how many things I have for sale? Zero. Zero. And, and I think, I think some of it is, is my problem, my personal problem with, with, you know, I don't know, receptivity. I mean, I can take and I say, Hey, thanks for listening to the show. I'm glad I can help. And, and then I go, how can I help? Right. Is there anything more that I can do for you? You know, when, you know, when can I feel like I've given enough? Uh, you know, I, I don't know if that's a, you know, it, 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 that has always been a problem for me, being receptive to that, to that um, attaboy or whatever. Is that an issue that, that is uh, – uh, or a problem that is indicative of, of go-givers? Uh, well, it, not of go-givers, it's a, but it's indicative of many people who are givers. In okay. order to be a go-giver, you do need to be able to receive. Uh, I, I, a lot of times when people say, well, Bob, I'm totally a go-giver. I mean, the, the first four laws, man, the, uh, I've been able to master, but that last one I just can't receive. Well, then they're a giver. They're, you know, nice, kind, very wonderful human being, but not a go-giver yet because a go-giver also has to be able to receive. And I have a feeling you already are and can receive, and, and it is inside you to be able to do that. But I'll just tell you this. That is the number one law that people have told John David Mann and myself that they have an issue with. And it's very understandable because, remember, we live in a society where – uh, there are so many messages of lack, so many yeah. negative messages about money, so so many people on an unconscious level because of everything they've heard, whether it's a, a combination of upbringing, environment, schooling, uh, you know, the media, 
television news uh, movies where there's always the, the the good people being portrayed as poor and the nasty people being rich and the whole that whole thing that we get hit with from the time where we're you know we enter the world hey it would get into anybody's subconscious uh, it would become unconscious that we have an issue with money so um because of this this is why in the story Pindar, the main mentor, went went through with Joe the idea of breathing out and trying to just breathe out without breathing in. And Joe couldn't do it, right? Mm, yeah. So, no, I've got to be, breathe in. We've got to breathe out and breathe in. See, the negative message, the messages of lack we receive says to us, well, I'm either a giver or a receiver. But that's not true at all. all right. See, if you have focused on constantly and consistently bringing value to others, you have earned the right, not the entitlement, but the right to receive. We simply need to understand that giving and receiving are not contradictory concepts. Yeah, they're, they're complementary. Actually- yeah, they're complementary, exactly. They're two sides of the very same coin. It's not are you a giver or a receiver. You're a giver and a receiver. Uh, and and I can't tell you how many people have written to us telling us that that chapter is what sort of for the first time in their lives gave them permission to allow themselves to receive and be abundant. And while we take that as a great compliment, we also feel badly that it's a it's a statement on society in a sense that we look down our noses and you know at 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 money and what it takes to to receive that kind of money. It takes providing value to others. That's what it takes. Yeah. So, you know, so you know, my thought is you've got, and I can tell just from talking with you, I've been on your website. I, I've heard about you. I know the things you're doing. My feeling is you've got so much phenomenal value to offer people. You should be putting some courses together and some audios and some videos or what have you. And you should be charging for those because people who purchase them are going to purchase them because they know they're going to receive much more in value than what they're paying. And you're going to make a very healthy profit on them, which you should. And in that way, uh, both parties not only win, but abundance is created for society. It's created for the individuals. It's created for everyone involved. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, I appreciate that, and I'm and I'm, I'm going to do that. I I think my only problem, and I don't want to go, I don't want to talk about this, but the, my only problem with that is is the level of of a product that I want to create. Um, you know, I'm creating something for me. And, and look, I'm way, way, I mean, I've done seven companies. Like I'm way, way ahead of the people, 99% of people. So I need to put together, I need to kind of, I don't need to put together a PhD course, right? I just put together an MBA course and that's great. So I'm, yeah, I appreciate that, Bob. I'm going to do that. Let me, we're going to start to wrap up here. Um, cause I know you, you gave me 30 minutes. I've already taken 36, but. Oh, that's, that's quite all right. <laughs> I appreciate it. So, so, you know, in the book, I, you know, Pindar uh, is, is the mentor in a lot of ways, right, right? You know, for you, right. I mean, who's, who's your Pindar, Bob? You know, I've been very lucky to have different Pindars come into my life at just the right times. I mean, my overall mentors are my parents. I was blessed to to have and still have just wonderful parents and and learned a great example about how to live life and and be a good person and focus on bringing value to others and that 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 that's been a blessing to me. I've also though had different mentors who came along at the right time. I'll never forget one. And, and another mentor of mine, Don Scumachi, uh, she and I re- refer to these people as drive-by mentors because they happen to just come at the exact right time, uh, provide a piece of advice that you happen to be open for at that time and make a huge difference for you. And I remember when I was first really starting to do well in sales. And uh, I was working with one company that – and I had come back to the office after a sale, and a, a guy who was retiring, he was not in sales, he was, I think, an engineer, I'm not really even sure, and to this day, I, I don't even know his name, but he was he was retiring, nice man, and he kind of, I think, saw me as the up-and-comer, but who needed to really get his priorities right regarding what business was about, and he he said to me, hey, Berg, he said, I just want to tell you that if you really want to make a lot of money in business, if you want to make a lot of money in sales, don't have making money as your target. Your target is serving others, 
Now, when you hit that target, he said, you'll receive a reward. That reward will be money, and you can do with that money whatever you choose. But never forget that the money is simply the reward for hitting the target. It's not the target itself. The target is serving others. And that right there made such a huge, huge difference in my life. Uh, And in a sense, that that was sort of the start of – going into a whole different realm in sales because now it was no longer about me. It was genuinely about the other person. Well, that's, you know, that, you know, everybody's kind of heard that line. I think it's Carnegie is, you know, help others, you know, you can get everything you want if you help enough people get what they want. Well, Zig Ziglar, yeah. Zig Ziglar, Zig Ziglar sorry. You can have everything in life you want if you'll just help enough other people get what they want. Absolutely. So, it's one of the most brilliant, brilliant statements I've ever heard. Um. Okay, so you know you've had these drive-by mentors. Um, have you been? Because I think there's a everybody should have a mentor, and I, and I and and I think people struggle with knowing how to go get one. I think everybody should have you know some sort of accountability partner. Um, how would you suggest people? You know, give us some you know some tips out there to if you know if, if somebody says, "Oh, geez, I think I need a mentor," uh, or "I would like a mentor." I mean, what are some ways that people can um, go and grab one? Well, I think one way to not do it is to just walk up to someone you admire and ask them to be your mentor. Mm. <laughs> that that tends to be very counterproductive. I, I think what happens is that mentor-protege relationships develop over time like any other really good relationship. Okay. And so it's certainly fine to, you know, ask someone for, you know, if you can, you know, buy them a cup of coffee and and just ask them a few questions and promise you won't take up much of their time. And, you know, you ask them a couple of questions, you send them a thank you note afterwards and you keep them up to date with what you're doing. And maybe you uh, see if you can get together with them again in a way that's not infringing upon their time and then whenever you can you try to bring value to them right introducing them to someone or whatever it happens to be so that they know you appreciate it and if it's a person who is interested in in mentoring you that person will make themselves available more and more and a genuine relationship will develop right and this this goes back i mean this just goes back to being authentic if you can be authentic and show everybody your warts and you know look here's here's what i suggest to people i say hey you know what at the beginning of the year january you know, put together a list of 10 people in your community that or, you know, maybe outside your community that you that are aspirational to you and, you know, and, and make it, you know, give give Bob Berg, for example. I put Bob Berg in my January schedule. Bob Berg's the guy that in January I'm going to sit down for five minutes and have a cup of coffee and, and talk with him. Right. So and then. And then, you know, when you get Bob Berg across the table, you know, don't like be very specific, have a list of questions prepared, man. And you go, OK, Bob, here's specifically what I want to ask you. Not like, hey, Bob, give me some advice. Right. And you're like, Bob, right. <laughs> that happens to me too much. OK, so um, the reason why I asked about mentors is, you know, you are, are a prolific writer and I'm sure you're a prolific reader. Um, what are some, look, here, here's the deal. I always ask for a book recommendation. Now I'm going to tell everybody that they need to go get the go giver by Bob Berg. So that's number one. But what's, if I, here's the setup, I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? I would say to buy the book, um, the secret of selling anything by Harry Brown. Mm. It's a book very few people have heard of. And by the way, the it, it, the title itself sounds like kind of an aggressive title. It, it's not. It's, it's this guy, Harry Brown, who is a real one of my you know former mentors and, and a, a real hero of mine. He this guy understood human nature. He understood selling. Uh, this actually came from two manuscripts that were discovered after he passed away. They were discovered by his wife. And uh, the the first they were written in the '60s, actually. So the language is is from the '60s, um, but the but the principles are absolutely fantastic. There's a whole group of us. There are many of us who've read this book, who we say it's the best book on sales ever written. And uh, Harry was a kind, gentle, fantastic human being who totally understood, again, human nature. He understood that if you were going to be a successful salesperson, it was a matter of it, of focusing on on the other person. And he put together a very simple process that if you read this book, it's a very easy, simple to read book. Uh, your your sales will never be the same. In fact, at my, I, at my um, blog at berg.com, B-U-R-G.com slash blog, if you'll go to that and just put 
uh, the secret of selling need not be a secret. It will come up to that post that I did on, on Harry's book. And um, I, I think you'll – if you that would be a book I would recommend to anyone and everyone. Got it. So everybody, go get that. I mean, look, if, if Bob's suggesting it, you got to get it. I'm going to get it. And I've never heard of that book, so I'm, I'm excited to, to – and hopefully it's on Audible. Uh, and if it's not on Audible, look, guys, get a free copy of Bob's book using our Audible link. Just go to audibletrial.com slash superagentslive and go get The Go-Giver. Hey – Bob, look, I, I, thanks for coming on the show. I always I encourage my audience, you know, if they've gotten any nuggets out of this, and, and there's been countless, I've, I've really enjoyed our time together, you know, I ask them to, to reach out to you, to our guest, and say thank you. So where can people find you? Uh, they can go to Berg.com, B-U-R-G.com, and while they're there, they can subscribe to my Influence and Success Insights if they'd like, and they can also get uh, Chapter 1 of The Go-Giver, which they can read uh, online, and then if they like it, they can click through to Amazon.com or, or get the book at their local uh, uh, bookstore. Yeah, what bookstore? I'm, just, I'm joking. There's no. Uh, um, you're right. It's exactly. Kind of, it kind of is like that. Now, I was, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was thinking earlier when you said it. You know, back in you the, know that what, coffee shop. <laughs> right. 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 Books, maybe. But I was just thinking about when you said. Uh, you know, when there 35 years ago, when there was a bookstore. Exactly. So it's it kind of like you know, 35 years ago when MTV played videos, right? I mean, music videos. Right. right. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. Well, hey, Bob. Look, I'll be the first one uh, to kick off this thank you chain. So thank you, man. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day and uh, coming and sharing with me and my audience. Oh, my absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. I love the work you're doing. Thanks, bud. All right, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.